Hello, everyone. Welcome to the MuseScore Cafe for today, December 16th, I believe, uh, 16th, 2020. Uh, uh, my name is Mark Sabatella. I'm the director of the Mastery MuseScore School. This is my weekly series, the MuseScore Cafe, where I talk about uh, some aspect of uh, creating music with MuseScore. So thanks, everyone uh, who's here. I, uh, I see a number of people checking in, which is great. And um, the topic that I uh, have, uh, I'm excited to talk about. I've been been saying I've wanted to talk about this for a while. Is our new 3.6 MuseScore 3.6 release? Which okay, so first I want to clarify the the release itself hasn't happened yet, so you won't see update notices or anything like that. But what we are doing is having a beta release, a public beta release. And you can install this beta release alongside your regular MuseScore, you know, if you're using 3.5, as uh, most people should be, um, then uh, this will install alongside of it and all the settings and everything are kept separate so that nothing, um, nothing you do in the beta can mess up your, your regular installation. And what I want to just do today is show you some of the things that are new. Uh, there's not actually, there's a ton of stuff that's new, but most of it is stuff you don't have to do anything to to use. In other words, it's not new options and new menu items and new controls. I mean, there are some of those, but for the most part, the whole point of most of the improvements is that your scores are going to look better without you having to do anything. Um, your existing scores won't be changed by default. So anyhow, that's what we'll be talking about. So um, what I want to do is... Uh, First thing, I'm going to point you to the place where you can read about the things that are actually new. Well, actually, first thing I should do is actually give you a link to where you can download the thing, right? That would be useful, wouldn't it? So let's go to uh, the main page of MuseScore.org, and uh, I there's the, the link to the announcement of the beta. So I'm going to paste this into the chat as soon as I find the window. Oh, there you are. Okay. Um, and I'll pin this to the top. So let's see, go and then pin. So this is where you can actually uh, download the thing uh, and just uh, start having a play with it. I also, though, want to show you, this is where I'm going to be working from. This is uh, in the online handbook. So on MuseScore.org, if you go to the handbook, which is where all the, the, the main documentation is, you'll see in the appendix is a new features in 3.6. And this is what I'm actually going to work from to make sure that I cover the stuff I want to uh, cover here. So that will uh, document what the uh, new features kind of are. And um, again, most of them are not things that you have to do anything in particular to enable, at least for new scores. For older scores, I'll, I'll show you what's involved with that also. So um, really, the big thing, well, actually, let's just look at the announcement, because that then, then we can say things. There's a nice picture here, which uh, is kind of showing what new is fonts. There is a new music font. So if you're looking at this and saying, well, gee, some of these sharp signs and time signature things look different than I'm used to seeing, this is deliberate. This is designed to uh, mimic the look of well, in, uh, let me back up. It, it's designed to look professional. <laughs> this is it was professionally de designed uh, by co-designed by uh, our uh, our 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 new uh, additions to the MuseScore team, Martin Keery and Simon Smith, who have designed this font. And where there is called uh, the the music font is called Leland, and it's uh, ba it's based on. Uh, a program called Score. And Score is actually the program that most publishers were using before things like Finale and Sibelius and now MuseScore and Dorico and all these others came out. It was the 
music typesetting program and still is, even though it's not commercially available, it was never really available to the general public that I know of. And as far as I know, isn't available at all anymore. It's still a very uh, well thought of program in the uh, publishing world. And this is an example of a score that was actually created using score. And so, uh, I mean, the fact that the time signatures are big and above the staff, that's unique to this particular score, but at least shows you what the font looks like for time signatures and just how the clefts look, how the notes look, how the accidentals look, and also the text. We also have a new text font uh, that we're calling Edwin. And uh, this new text font is designed, it's actually based on the, the New Century Schoolbook text font, which is used by yeah, a lot of publishers also. So um, uh, I see a question about the Google Arts and Culture Blob Opera. No, I don't know what that is. Is this like the thing that shows up if you try to do a search today? Um, so I should, uh, I should check that out later. Um, so uh, this is just a, a picture, though, uh, the, to give you an idea of what things look like. And I want to show you now what this looks like in MuseScore. So when you first... In MuseScore, what you're used to seeing is this sort of default empty score. Right off the bat, you might notice it looks different than you're used to. The most obvious differences to me, if you look at the title, well, the T just looks different. Uh, you know, that's uh, just uh, an observation in fact. So this, you can see the font is Edwin. If I switch that to free serif, this is what it used to look like. And the T is the, the really obvious difference that the, the serifs are, are noticeably more prominent in Edwin as far as that goes. So anyhow, that's like a, an easy uh, check that you can, uh, you know, just visually see, oh yeah, I'm seeing this new font here. But the other thing you might notice <clears throat> is there is now an indentation on the first system by default. And that's, that is normal in most published music, that the first system would have this uh, indent applied to it. And you know, like in my score, so let's look at Reunion. This is the original version of Reunion, pre all the changes. And I had actually got the first system to indent by creating a horizontal frame. And that horizontal frame was how I achieved that indent. So um, I was doing that manually. And I did that on scores where I felt it was worth the trouble, but I didn't do it on all my scores because it is trouble. And realistically, it's not appropriate for every single score. Uh, I would say most lead sheets that I'm familiar with do not do that. They they are much more about uh, squared off. And in fact, they typically go, well, not typically, but often might go for consistent measure widths. I think I've showed that a little bit in a previous one. So, uh, previous cafe. So anyhow, this uh, now applies by default. Uh, when you create a new score, you'll get an indent. So this is what I mean about like this stuff happens without you needing to know about special controls. But I will point out that under the format style menu, you will see now under score, this is where you select this font Leland, which is the, the notation font. And also, where you would enable the indentation on that first system. So uh, this is, if I want to disable it, you'll see the uh, indent goes bye-bye, and now it comes back. And then you can control how big that indent is. But you know, by default, it's just there. So this is what Reunion looks like with my manual uh, adding this horizontal frame. I want to now show you what Reunion looks like uh, in, the, in the new settings. So here is what it looks like in the new settings. So old, new, old, new. So you would have to like do, you know, some pretty in-depth comparisons to, to really understand everything that's changed uh, because, you know, it's still music, right? It's just a different font, but it's, it's really designed, as I said, to be a very professional uh, looking font where it's actually going to look like uh, published music. And uh, if I find uh, on my shelf back here, I don't, I just don't know what was actually published using score versus using any other program. So I, I or manually engraved, you know, back in the days when you actually used, you know, pieces of lead and stuck them on printing presses and all. 
but uh, that's kind of the look that uh, this is going for. So let me just highlight a few of the differences that I might notice. Well, so one is uh, the clef in the old version is kind of thinner. Um, I'll just focus on that. Let's actually zoom in so we just see just the beginning. Because I think just looking at the beginning here, you'll get a pretty good idea. Let me pick the same uh, thing. I'll go with 400. And then here, I'll go with 400. Oh, by the way, uh, as long as I'm zooming, here's another uh, new thing, is that there used to be a maximum zoom. Uh, like, I think it was, I don't remember even what it was, but now we are allowing you to zoom like really crazy big if you should want to. Not that you would normally want to, but if you do, and sometimes I do while I'm in development because I'm trying to check to see, to make sure that this note exactly lines up with that stem, right? And we're, we're, we're worrying about those sorts of details. So being able to zoom in to like crazy high zoom levels is a new feature also, a, a kind of nice little thing. So I'm going to focus on just the, the beginning of the score here. And so you can see a little more of the differences. So there's the old, there's the new. So if you look at the flat sign, this is one that I think a lot of people had complained about, actually, that this flat sign really looks kind of misshapen and this bulbous kind of thing over here. The new flat sign is a little more, <clears throat> I don't know, uh, less awkward looking is the best, uh, best way I can describe it. Uh, so that's that's a difference there. Um, if you look at the time signatures here, it's it looks how it looks. Uh, the new version is, I guess, bolder is maybe the best way I could describe it. Um, look at this rest here. It's a, a little bit narrower than this rest here, which is a little wider, but with a thinner stroke. Um, so there's all sorts of changes like that. The treble clef here is, I would say... <clears throat> comparatively top heavy. I don't know if that's a, a good way of describing it. But if you look at the top section of this compared to the bottom section of that, and then you look at the new font, you see the new font is more bottom heavy. Um, so anyhow, th these are all changes that are <clears throat> um, just... Uh, They, again, were designed to look like what a lot of more professionally designed scores look. Now, the font we were using is called Emmentaler, and that's still available. You can still go to Format, Style, and switch to Emmentaler and get uh, the old thing back. So that is still available. And if you have an existing score, it won't update by default. When you open an older score, so let me open one of my previous scores. I'm going to go... Uh, open up my, uh, what's a good one to use? Uh, I'm going to, yeah, I'll use my, uh, we gathered together one that we were looking at recently. So this one, I think I've, I must've already chosen the option that says stop asking me on this score. However, there's a tricky way to get it to update to use the new settings. And what I'm going to do is go to the format menu, reset style. This is going to set all my style settings to their default values. Now this setting has been there, this command has been there for like probably two years and I just noticed it for the first time today. <laughs> um, I don't know how that's managed to happen, but it did. So when I hit this, it's going to change all of my defaults to use, uh, it looks like I guess that's free serif. It, it looked a little different than I remembered. Um, it's going to change all the settings to use the new default, which will include Leland and Edwin, the text font. Hello? Oh, seriously? So, one of those crashes that happens in demos? No, it didn't crash. It just took a minute. All right. So, um, not sure why that took as long as it did, but... <clears throat> Anyhow, so just by doing that format reset style, I was able to get this score to update to the new settings. If I hadn't already opened this one before and and ch and uh, chosen against it, it would have uh, 
it would have asked me. And so I want to show you that. So if I take one of my older scores, uh, here's an older score. Oh, I probably opened this one too. Okay, this is what this, the dialogue looks like. It asks, do you want to try the new, the, the new stuff? And then you can choose whether you want to use the notation font or the text font or both. And then you can also say whether you don't want it to ask again. So when I do this, I can say apply the new style and then the new style is applied. So it's just as easy as that. So, um, so yeah, overall, if you want to say that most things look bolder, that's probably true, but it's, it's actually not that mo it's, I would say the things that should be bolder, the things you want to have your eyes drawn to are bolder. Other things are maybe not as big as they were before. So for instance, the whole rest, do we ever have a whole rest in reunion? Yes. Um, well, we have a half rest here. The half rest is actually uh, less prominent here. And, and also you saw with the eighth rest, right? This eighth rest is less bold than the eighth rest was there. So some things have actually gotten a little lighter in comparison. And then the hope is that the things that should be uh, standing out more do stand out more. I wasn't involved in the design of, of the font, but as I look at it, I really uh, see a lot to like about it. Now, it's also the case that, well, it's different, right? And so if you're just used to how things look, then you can keep your old scores looking the way they have looked. And when you create new scores, you can go to format style and just set them manually to end and taller. I should also mention that if you come up with any customizations you like, like maybe you like the new font, but there's some other settings, like maybe you don't want the indent turned on by default uh, because mostly you're using uh, scores where that's not appropriate. You know, you can set up whatever customizations you like, and then you can go to format, save style. And when you do that, it'll ask you, uh, it'll put up a dialogue and, and give you an opportunity to choose a, a name for the file. It'll end in .mss. And then you can go to Edit Preferences Score and uh, say what you want your default. So here you can see the default is Leland.mss. And that's how it's going to load the, um, the Leland defaults every time you create a new score. So you can override that. You can, you know, instead choose one of your customized styles to be your default style. Uh, so anyhow, that's always been a, a thing. But uh, if if you're now looking at Leland and saying, oh, I really like things about Leland, but there's some other settings that I want customized differently, you you can definitely do that. And I, I want to mention another thing that's different. And this isn't a font difference. So this is another setting different. The slur here is thinner than this is the old uh, default settings. The new defaults have the slur as thicker in the middle. Again, this is a traditional way that, you know, most scores are engraved and uh, Muse scores defaults were just always a little bit thin. And that is also just a setting under style. It's uh, style slurs. And this is where you set these thicknesses. And you can see here that Leland has already made this thicker than whatever the original default is. And that's because anytime you change to, when you uh, change uh, to that Leland style, it's going to not only change the font, but it's gonna change a few other settings, like apparently this one. So that if I reset it, well, I guess it's just showing me that it's different, but it's resetting to what was in Leland.mss. So I, if I wanna find out what it was previously, I could go here, format, style. It looks like it used to be 0 0.15, 0 0.15, but now it is 0.21. So yeah, it's just a thicker slur in the middle. So anyhow, th there's an immediate and obvious visual difference um, uh, between your in in how your scores look as a result of the fonts and some settings like th slur thicknesses and I think the ledger line width might be a little different and uh, a couple other things like that. So um, th that is something that you see just without having to do anything when you create new scores. It'll be that way. But some of the other changes are really that much more exciting when when creating new scores. And I want to call attention to this. I'm going to go to create a new score. And I'm going to give it a title, and I'm going to say, uh, 
Oh, some sort of wind ensemble. No, it's not even going to be winds. Well, what is it going to be? It's going to be a instrumental ensemble. That's what it's going to be. And now I say I want to choose some instruments and say, I'm like, you know, I know I want some trumpets. I want some horns. I want a tuba. And notice I typed trumpet first because I think of trumpet as the high instrument. However, that's not traditional. Traditionally, horns go before trumpets. It's just the way it is. And MuseCore now knows that. So even though I added the trumpet first, then the horn, it knew to put the horn above the trumpet and then the tuba. Now, let's say I want to add some uh, clarinets. It knows, oh, the woodwinds go on top. So it does that automatically. And then again, I add a bassoon, then I add a flute. It's doing everything in the right order. Um, Oh, strings. I should have some strings. Oh, I didn't mean this, but I'll go ahead and add a band. I'll add a, a guitar anyhow, a uh, classical guitar, and it knows that goes on the bottom. And then if I want to add other strings like violin. Now, I thought that we were going to have violins show up here, not just violin, a, a common list. It appears that maybe that's not the case. So, uh, Oh, the search box moved up here. I think that's great because a lot of people never found it, and now it's here at the top of the list, but I was looking for it at the bottom where it used to be. So violins is what we really want, assuming it's a whole section. Uh, and then I want to add another set of violins because I've got first and second violins, and then the viola. Oh, not viola. Let's remove that one. But violas and cellos. And we'll just go with it that way. So it added everything in the right order. Now, when I create this score, we'll notice that not only did it add them in the right order, but look what it also did. It automatically connected the bar lines so that the, the woodwinds are connected by a bar line, the brass is connected by a bar line, the guitar is kind of by itself, and then all the strings are connected by bar lines. The violins got named violins one and violins two, and they got connected uh, with a second bracket. So not only were the bar lines extended, but the brackets were added automatically. These brackets were added automatically, including the second one here. So how do you remove the dash above the end of measure one? So I'm guessing that you mean you have a uh, pickup measure. So that's not there for real. It's only this dash here. This is just there as a reminder. Notice it's gray. It's just like the... Uh, um, the line break here. It's showing you, it's there to show you uh, that this measure has fewer than the regular number of beats in it, that it's a pickup measure. So it's just there as a reminder. It won't print, it won't export to PDF. But along with all other symbols like, like these breaks, you can go to the view menu and say you don't want to show the print. So turn off show unprintable and it makes them go away. Um, but it's not really there. It's just there as a reminder so that you can tell that this measure has too few beats in it. It's got fewer than four beats in it. Okay. So yeah, so this score, uh, when it got set up, it, um, it automatically added everything in the right order. It automatically extended bar lines correctly. It automatically added brackets correctly. But now let's also check this other thing that's happening. Although, what is, I'm, I'm uh, okay. So what I want to show you is I'm adding some measures here also. Uh, I'm a little surprised. I think it's because this, uh, the first page, it because of the title, it's decided to push this a little uh, lower. But what I want to show you is if, for whatever reason, some system, some, uh, some pages might have more staves than other staves, like uh, if I turn on the hide empty staves option, well, first let me enter some notes so I, I don't have a problem here. I'm going to enter some notes. Okay, I'm entering a C everywhere <laughs> uh, because uh, I wanted to enter a C everywhere. But of course, with concert pitch off, that's that's different pitches. So because of the transpositions, but we're not going to worry about it. Uh, so, so so say that in this 
part of the score, all the instruments are playing. Let me hit R to repeat that and just fill up a little more of my score. Um, but on this part, let's say that only the concert pitch instruments are playing. <laughs> Whoops, not that one. Okay, so in this part of the score, only my concert pitch instruments, and I'll fill it up a little more again. I'm going to put an explicit line break here just to make sure that nothing goes funny because um, I don't want some of these measures migrating to the next page as I make changes. All right, so when I turn on empty, when I turn on hide empty saves, let's do that. Uh, this is under format, score, hide empty staves. Now, what I was expecting to see, but didn't see here, uh, is I'm expecting to see that it's going to automatically spread out the staves so that this extends to the bottom of the page. And in my example here, that is not happening. And why is that? I am not so sure. Let me put a line break here and actually make it a page break. So it might be that it says, you know what, there's a little too many missing staves and I don't want to add that much extra space. So let me just go ahead and add a couple more. So maybe it's not turned on. Maybe I got to turn that option on. Maybe that's not on by default. Uh, that would surprise me. Let's find out though. That's under the page. Enable vertical justification. All right. So already I'm seeing something I don't expect here, and I don't know what to tell you about that, why that's not working. Um, but what is supposed to happen is it's going to automatically spread these staves out to reach the bottom margin there. And for whatever reason, it's not doing it. And uh, that's that's um, surprising me. So I'm not sure what that what what to tell you about that. Uh, but I will say that in general, that is supposed to work. Let me, let me. That's that is bugging me because that was one of the important things to be able to show you. And the fact that it's not working is definitely odd. We fixed a bug in this, uh, like like just in the hours before we released it, and I hope that fixing that bug didn't cause another bug, but um, it's certainly possible. So anyhow, uh, this is going to be something I'm going to have to take back and uh, go back to the drawing board on. I didn't implement this. I, I, I did get involved in a little bug fixing with it, but it definitely does work in general. And so now I have to ask myself, uh, do I have other scores that I can show you where it definitely does work? Um, I'm going to go to the string quartet. And what I'm going to do here is add a bunch of measures and say, I'm going to add breaks every four measures. All right. So I think this is going to make the, the, the situation a little clearer. All right. Yeah. All right. Now this is what I'm talking about. Okay. So let's look at this. So the empty ones have the staves really close together. And that's, of course, not really going to happen in real life. But notice it was able to fit four systems on this page and how close they are. On the next page, I and added a note way below the staff that caused this pair of staves to get spread out more. And this then prevented it from being able to fit four systems anymore. It's only got three systems on the page. Well, if I disable that option, that enable vertical justification, this is... Eh, let me undo this. I'm having trouble uh, getting it to um, 
demonstrate what I thought I wanted to demonstrate because that other example was really <laughs> what I wanted it to work with. But all the um, staves here are the same distance apart except for this one. When I did it with uh, enable vertical, vertical justification enabled, what you see is it's got tighter staff spacing here wider staff spacing here because it can. So instead of putting all the extra space between the systems, let's undo that change. Oh, that one doesn't uh, undo. I already discovered that. So disable, let's, uh, let's look at it here. Disabled. Notice here, mm, well, it also changed all the staff distances. So I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm getting flustered because it's uh, not behaving exactly the way I would expect. Um, but with with all I can say is the bottom line is it is now going to add space between staves as necessary to try to fill the page. And in doing that, and, and that's what I'm a little surprised it's not doing here, but there are settings to control that. And maybe I just need to play with uh, some more of these settings here. So the maximum staff distance. I'm nowhere near that. Uh, let's just see what this factor for distance between systems. Now I have no idea. Um, oh, look at that. Ah, so this is really cool. So look, look at what it's doing there. It's this setting here controls how much extra space it's automatically adding between our woodwinds and brass and guitar and strings. So let's reset back to the default. At the default, it's like barely any difference, but you can make it be, you know, this is now two. It's now twice as much space between here and then whatever extra it's doing to spread it. So, um, yeah, so it does, this, uh, this, this spreading thing does work. And I think, oh, it's the max page fill difference is different distance here. I just don't have turned up enough. So let's, let's turn that up more. And maybe that will uh, make the point a little better. It, what it does is it's like, well, only if it's close, am I going to try to do that? But let's, let's increase this. Ha ha ha. There we go. So now with this increase, so I'm not sure why that value was as small as it was, but there we go. Um, so yeah, the defaults are chosen to work well for a number of scores, but you know, depending on your specific score, it might not. So I turned up that amount that said how much it will fill the page by, and now you see it finally is filling the page. Whew. All right, that's good. I was actually scaring myself that I broke something in this uh, bug fix that I did yesterday. So um, thank you, the max page fill difference. Simon, yes, thank you so much. I discovered that after, I discovered that you posted that after I did that there, but that's um, uh, what was apparently missing and I just didn't have it turned up high enough. Suggesting that maybe a higher value is better, but I remember a previous, like in the alpha version, it was really high and it was doing crazy things like, like taking a lead sheet that only had three lines, that three staves on it, and it was spreading them all out to fill the whole page, and that wasn't going to work. So I'm sure that's why it got reduced, the default got reduced, but maybe it's reduced a little too much, or maybe not. Maybe that's better. Um, but in any case, there you go. It does work. Ha! And thanks, uh, Simon, for uh, checking in here. Um, feel free to give me any uh, other pointers. Um, uh, wow. Oh, Howard, yeah. So Howard's in... Uh, you, it's like, it's like the middle of the morning for you, right? Cause you're, you're like 12 hours off from me in China, I believe. So, um, great. And Simon, if you've got anything else you want to, um, chime in with here, uh, feel free. So I want to, uh, so anyhow, those two features, the new fonts and this new algorithm having to do with spreading staves and not just spreading staves, but automatically, uh, ordering the staves for you as you add the instruments, automatically bracketing them, automatically uh, uh, extending the bar lines. The only thing I had to do was turn up that page fill for this score. Uh, I'm assuming that value works well for a lot of other ensembles. It just didn't happen to work quite so well for this particular ensemble. Um, but then all it took was turning up one setting and suddenly my my um systems are all nice and uh 
uh, even. Like notice even that the first page, which has the title on it, usually that one is longer because the title pushes everything lower. But now, no, it went ahead and compressed the distance between those staves and then spread out the next page, which has all the staves on it but they're spread out more because it doesn't have to make room for the title. And then the next one is actually got some staves missing because I'm hiding the empty ones. And so they're spreading further. That didn't used to work, happen that way. You just have ragged bottom margins and you would have to add staff spacers between your staves or otherwise do a lot of manual adjustment of things if you wanted things to look neat on the bottom. So that's one of the things that we have simplified and uh we get to uh uh thank uh Niek for uh this so um uh so thanks uh thanks simon for uh for uh, checking in again and so yeah the, this right here in a nutshell is the biggest stuff that um that you can look forward to is that when you create new scores now they're going to look better by default you're going to have the right instrument ordering, you're going to have the right bracketing, you're going to have the right uh, extension of bar lines. Those are all things you could get right before, but they took effort. The spacing took a lot of effort because it would mean every single page going through and adding these uh, um, spacers to space things out. And then furthermore, um, you know, if the layout of your score changed, you'd have to adjust all your spacers. Now this is all automatic. So the automatic extent to which you get things looking really good out of the box, plus of course the new font, this is the main the main thing that we are talking about that's uh, new in 3.6. So other than that page fill, none of this required me to take any explicit action. It just happened automatically. Or when opening an, uh, an older score, I got to choose, uh, yes, I wanna use the new settings. Um, other than that, um, the uh, other new features that exist, so we saw the vertical justification, we saw the indentation, uh, applying the new automatic ordering. So uh, if you have a score that you created previously, um, so like if I open one of my older scores, and let's see, do I have one that's got some random combination of instruments? Well, probably uh, I do uh, somewhere. Uh, my test folder is where I have all sorts of random things that people have uh, uploaded as I've been trying to, you know, as we try to fix bugs and things. So let's take a look at some random score that someone sent me. Uh, so I'm gonna say, yeah, let's go ahead and put in the new styles. Actually, I'll tell you what, the new style settings, even if I say I wanna apply the new style setting, it applies the fonts, but it doesn't apply that uh, indentation. Notice it didn't apply the indent and it didn't apply the justification. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, I'm gonna use that reset style. And now that's gonna do the spread and uh, the indentation. And this is, the look of this page is actually why maybe that page fill is as low as it was, um, because this gets a little dangerous if you have a situation where there's only three systems and you have these huge gaps there. So that's a reason why that page fill was turned down to prevent this from getting worse. This this is probably okay, but there's probably situate there were definitely in the uh, in the alpha situations where you would just get crazy amounts of space. Um, so uh, anyhow, um, in this, it, it looks like this one doesn't have any instruments instruments in it. It's just voices, but it's the voice and the organ. So if things weren't connected the way they should be, all you have to do is under ordering say, well, what kind of ensemble are we talking about here? It's not gonna change the instruments, it's gonna fix the ordering for you. Because realistically, the ordering is different for a jazz big band versus a concert band, as far as like how, uh, the, 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 what the proper order of instruments is. Um, you know, sometimes we list brass uh, in a different order or we list woodwinds, saxophones might be in a different position relative to other woodwinds and so, so forth, depending on the kind of ensemble you're talking about. So uh, I, I wasn't aware that we had this many different ones to choose from. But you could just say, oh yeah, this is actually meant to be a small concert band. And then if, if necessary, it will reorganize the staves for you. So um, 
In fact, I, I want to see that happen. Um, so I'm going to create one, and I'm going to deliberately create something weird. And it thinks this is orchestra, but then I'm going to like fool it by moving the harmonica up to the top. And when I do that, it now says it's customized. Oh, that's nice. Um, wow, that's cool. Um, so it's this customized version where the harmonica is on top. But if I go back to this, I can now tell it, oh, just change it to the plain orchestra thing. And it moved the harmonica back to the bottom for me because it thinks harmonicas go uh, below brass in an orchestra. <laughs> I don't know how many orchestras call for harmonica parts, so I can't vouch for the correctness of that. But in any case, the point is, if you have a score where you've got instruments that you've set up one way or in which it's just willy-nilly because you weren't thinking, just by selecting an appropriate type of ensemble from that drop-down, it will sort them for you the way it thinks is, uh, is appropriate. So that's something you can do. Um, Let's uh, just go through uh, other things that are in there. So there's a cup. There's a bunch of like subtle things that have settings uh, that I I don't want to dwell on too much. But there's certain things like the length of ledger lines and the distance between beams, where we had settings that we had made uh, that were designed to look right, but the way we implemented them wasn't right is, uh, I, I don't want to go too deep into this, but the, the point is if you take an older score and import it and you had cut, if you take an older score where you had customized the distances between beams or the lengths of your ledger lines, and you then import that score into 3.6, the meaning of that customization, uh, will have changed because basically we were always interpreting those customizations wrong before and now we're interpreting them correctly so if you would customize those settings uh that's under format style um i think so under notes is where the ledger line length is and under beams is where those distances are if you had um uh if you had customized those before when you import that into 3.6, you might see a difference. And so there's a section in the handbook here that tells you about that and how to adjust it. It's not something you normally need to care about. Uh, similar with some adjustments having to do with the placement of the flags relative to uh, relative to the stems. I think something that's um, uh, different now is that the, the tops of stems are now flat, whereas they were rounded. And I gather that, I mean, I know that was a deliberate uh, decision. So this is the new flat stem top. Is it the new flat stem top? Or maybe I'm, maybe I'm confusing myself. Well, in any case, uh, maybe I applied some settings. Anyhow, there's, there's differences there. I, it, we're getting really into the nitty gritty of some things. Uh, the, um, some, something that is a nice uh, uh, sort of a bug fix, basically, is that uh, the accidentals, if you put parentheses around your accidentals, oh, uh, Reunion, I think, had one of those. Did it have a parenthesized accidental? Well, if I want to add a parentheses around an accidental, I press the parentheses key. It didn't used to necessarily get the spacing correct. You might have to adjust it. We're better about that now. We're also better about things like uh, there were certain situations where if you had a note above the stem on a ledger line and then another note here and then you tried to put an accidental on it, it used to be the case that this accidental would clash with that ledger line and now we fixed that. So we've, we've improved the spacing around accidental. It was already pretty good in comparison to other programs actually, but we've improved it that much more. Um, so those are the major changes. Oh, one other last thing I changed, uh, I, I, I fixed that has been bugging me for a while and I just finally got around to it is the Muse Jazz font wasn't being kerned properly. Uh, by kerning, I mean things like, I will show you in a sample in a second here. Uh, where's one of my lead sheets? So 
So here I don't want to change the, the style. So kerning is the, the uh, process of making letters sort of overlap where possible. So T coming home to. There we go. So this here is was not working properly for the last couple of years. The letter O, notice how it's able to tuck under the T. That had been broken the last couple of years. Not just the word two, but anytime that sort of thing happens. And so uh, managed to Im improve that as well. So that's happening more correctly. There, there's some, I think, uh, yeah, and the, and the Edwin font turns beautifully. Uh, other fonts work right, but Muse Jazz was always a little goofy. Now, I should mention this particular score I created kind of before we had a notation font for uh, jazz. And so we do now have, by now, I mean for the last couple of years, we've had a font uh, called Muse Jazz. So there's Muse Jazz text for the text, but there's Muse Jazz so that... Let's go back to Emmentaler, which is what this was created with. Emmentaler is a traditional kind of uh, printed font. But if I change that to the new one, Leland, okay, now it's the new font. But it's still a printed looking font as opposed to this sort of handwritten look that's kind of traditional in jazz lead sheets. So we for long had a Muse Jazz font, which uh, then gives you a more handwritten look to things like your clefts and your time signatures and your accidentals. The notes themselves are actually still, these are just straight stems. We don't go crazy on stems, but we do things like uh, play with the thickness of the bar lines and other things to give it a more hand-drawn appearance. So that's not new, but what is new is the, a new handwritten font, Petaluma. So Petaluma has its own distinctive look in which you can compare, Muse Jazz has a tall clef and relatively small time signatures. Petaluma has the opposite, <laughs> a small clef and tall time signatures. Um, I would say that um, all of these sort of choices are sort of, uh, you know, your own personal preference, but people were always saying, hey, I, I like the idea of handwritten fonts, but I don't like that particular one. Are there any others? And so this is an open source one that we have been able to incorporate one. This we didn't design ourselves. Leland, we actually designed ourselves. By we, I mean Simon and Martin designed Leland themselves. But Petaluma, we uh, got from a third party, but it's open source, so it's um, we're able to include it. So those are uh, basically the new things that I know to be telling you about. There's probably a few other smaller little fixes and tweaks and things here and there. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's not expected that we're going to add any new features. You know, when, by putting out the beta, we're saying we're done with features. We're going to fix bugs that get reported, but we're not looking at adding new features to MuseCore 3.6 at this point or to MuseCore 3 because the next major release after this is going to be MuseCore 4. It's still going to be many months out, you know, summer, fall, whatever, next year. But 3.6 is expected to be the last major release in the MuseCore 3 series. There will probably be, you know, a 3.6.1, 3.6.2, if, you know, as bugs get discovered and uh, fixed, if necessary. <laughs> if we get lucky, there's no bugs. If we get lucky, all of you will install the beta, play with it, submit uh, problem reports, and we'll fix them all before 3.6 comes out for real. I suppose the next question is, when is that happening? Well, I don't know the answer to that question. And uh, even if I thought I knew there was always the chance that it's wrong, right? Because you know, it's going to depend on how many bugs uh, get reported and what's involved in fixing them and so forth. So all I will say is that 3.6 should be coming soon. I don't think we're. I don't think anyone is looking at this beta as being, you know, three months of beta. I think we're talking weeks probably. So um, those are the things I want to show you. And again, uh, I encourage you to download the thing and install it because it's not going to. Uh, conflict with your existing uh, your e existing installation you can have 3.5 and 3.6 in parallel and they won't they won't like share settings or anything um, I, I I actually personally like them to share settings so I've done some some tricks behind the scenes uh, to get them to share their settings but normally they don't oh that does remind me though there is there is another uh, thing that's not on the list there that's it's absolutely worth showing you um, 
and that's it's still in the text palette even though it doesn't really belong there there's this thing that we've had for a while called a staff type change and let me show you what that looks like um uh i just want to see it yeah this is a good score for it i'm going to put in my staff type change here on the third measure it used to have an s icon for staff type change, and which is why it ended up in the text palette. It never, it's not text. It's just the, it's just a thing that allows you to change some stuff. So uh, reverse final uh, bar line is that really a thing? Okay, so uh, um, uh, I'm gonna come back to that in a second, but I want to talk about this uh, um, staff type change. The staff type change once you add it, and this has been around ever since MuseScore three, but it's been limited, and we've been gradually improving it, and it's gotten. Uh, quite a bit better for 3.6. So for instance, there, now my staff lines are invisible from this point on. I added my staff type change to measure three, and then I said invisible staff lines, and now the staff lines are invisible. Of course, you can still see them grayed out because show invisible is enabled here, but now that's not. So uh, now the staff lines are invisible. So if you want to go back and forth between invisible staves and visible staves, you can do that. Um, now there's also a cutaway feature we have, and that makes these stave, these measures go away completely, the rests and the bar lines. That um, feature is also, there's a pending improvement that I hope actually becomes part of MuseScore 3.6. I'm a little disappointed it didn't make it into the beta, but we'll see. That's the cutaway feature here. And if you declare a staff to be cutaway, the non-empty measures just go away. Let's add some notes. So there you go. So now the, the measures that are empty go away entirely if you set it to be a cutaway staff. But um, let me undo that cutaway business here because I just wanted to show you that. But the invisible staff lines are a thing, but also if I click that staff type change, you can also change things like um, if you want the notes to change to pitch names, uh, that can be done in there. You can make the staff line color be something other than black. You can change how many lines are on your staff. So let's not make them invisible, but let's go to only three lines. And oh, three lines, but with a distance of 1.5, or no, a distance of two, so they spread out more. So these are all things that were, some of these things were there before, but they didn't necessarily work right. So a, a lot of things, and, and then some things like the invisible staff lines weren't even there. So in general, the staff type change has become more powerful. Now there's something else that this, I, would very much love to tell you is going to work, but I don't know if it's going to work. And so we're going to find out in a second. But I vaguely recall finding out that this is going to work. I'm going to try to add an instrument change here. Instrument change from the from this palette here, uh, the text palette. Instrument change to drum set. Ha ha ha! Check that out. So, totally works now. Totally works, not totally though. Well, that's interesting. Well, that's interesting little glitch. It's still playing back when I click in the palette. It's, <laughs> it's clicking back, it's playing trombone notes, uh, but it's adding them correctly. Oh, that's kind of an interesting little buglet. So, trombone, drums. There you go. So that was never possible before. It was never possible before to change between a pitched and an unpitched instrument like that. And now it is. And this is really big because often in uh, percussion ensemble type scores, you might go back and forth between saying playing marimba for a while and then move over to being to playing a drum set or playing, uh, you know, snare drum or whatever. Uh, so in orchestral scores or, or percussion ensemble type of thing where percussionists aren't just sitting behind a drum set the whole time or aren't just playing triangle the whole time, they might go back and forth between pitched and unpitched instruments. And it was never possible to do that directly. And now it is. So I want to see the thing about the reverse bar line. Uh, so that was about the double bar line. So let's look at this double bar line here. I'm going to assume that this is either in the inspector style final bar line. 
reverse final bar line. Boom, there it is. So I guess that's new. I would never have wanted one. Well, I know maybe you could want one at the beginning of a system for some reason. Um, but I also don't know if there's a style setting under bar lines to control that. Scale. Nope, it's not. I guess it's not a style setting. It's just something you do individually. So um, there you go. So uh, as far as new things like new features, you know, new buttons to press, it's not a big release in that sense. But as far as the difference it's going to make in how your scores can look, it's a huge release because with this automatic processing of of the uh, ordering of the staves and the bracketing of the staves and the bar lines and the spacing and the new fonts, scores are going to look much better by default. And so uh, people who like MuseScore.com has, I don't know, millions of scores that have been uploaded. And a lot of them, frankly, do not look good because MuseScore didn't do these things for them and they didn't know how to do these things. Now, if you know how to do these things, it was possible to get good results. It's always been possible to get good results on most of these uh, things. It just took conscious effort and now it won't. And so now uh, we, we think that the uh, average level the, of uh, professionalism of what we see on uh, musicore.com is going to go way up. And hopefully you guys will be happy with the results you see as well. So um, if there are other questions, I'm happy to try to answer other questions. But otherwise, I have now I'm, I'm sure there's some other little miscellaneous feature like this uh, thing here with the, oh, look at that, the uh, staff line icon, the, the icon actually changed its appearance depending on how many lines. So zero staff lines. Hey, that's a thing. That's different than invisible staff lines. So when in staff lines are invisible, zero staff lines, nope, zero staff lines, huh? Yeah, I don't, I don't actually know what's up with that. But, um, uh, oh, because I had the uh, line distance so big. Um, in any case, it's showing me within the icon uh, a little bit about what it's going to look like. Um, so that's kind of cool. Um, anyhow, because it used to just be an S. So um, I appreciate you all being here. So again, I'm going to uh, remind you that uh, tomorrow I do my music master class. And by the way, uh, the easiest way, I mean, I always try to send out specific links to specific uh, episodes so that like the link that I send out via my email list. And if you're not on my email list, please get, please uh, go ahead and go to uh, here, easiest way. If you just go to my website, you will have the opportunity to sign up for the email list, and then I'll send out notifications about topics for, you know, what I'm going to talk about for cafe updates and all things like that. Um, this is my site here. Um, and that's also where you can, I have to give my commercial where you can go and uh, sign up for any of my courses, the uh, Mastery Muse Score course, which I will be updating for 3.6 at some point after it comes out and everything's all stable. Um, so, uh, and my harmony course, my theory course, et cetera, and the music master class there, which is free. So, um, by signing up for those, you'll get, you'll get notifications of these things, but also you should just know that in general, if you go to my YouTube channel, so see masterymusecore.com, uh, so, or oh, masterymusecore, youtube.com, see masterymusecore, that's my YouTube channel, and you will always be able to see the current, whatever's currently live will always show here. So, um, you know, that's how you can easily get to that's live now, right? So that's where you'll always be able to see where the upcoming masterclass is, even if I don't have a link. But I'm going to put a link to this week's specifically in here. Music master class. And that way you can go here. And that way, even if you're too late for the live one, this link will take you to next week. I mean, tomorrow's masterclass. So next week, of course, is Christmas week. And uh, yeah, a week from today. Yeah, th this is going to be uh, I will be taking off the next two weeks because um, this this coming week, Christmas week, next week after that, New Year's, I'm going to kind of reset my palette and uh, 
um, be ready with some new stuff for you in January. I'm still going to be, you know, participating in, you know, discussions in within the master class and commenting on scores and things. So, um, Julio, yeah, if you just got here, I am talking about MuseScore 3.6. It is available for be- uh, it, the beta release is available today. Just go to the top of the chat. You will see the link where you can download it. It can live side by side with your current MuseScore 3.5 or whatever else. And yes, I will be updating the online course with 3.6. I will probably start on that once it's released because I, I want all my screenshots to look good. So I, I, I'm, I might work on it a little bit over the next coming weeks, but I, I will be uh, doing it that much more uh, once MuseScore 3.6 really releases. It'll only take me a week or two to update all the videos that I need to update. So, um, because especially because there's, you know, really only a few new features to show. It's mostly just about stuff working better. So um, it do, it's not going to require that much to, to do the update. All right. So I uh, hope you've all enjoyed. And thanks so much for being here. Come join for the master class tomorrow. We have a lot of fun. I'll be I'll be doing a little demo, and I'll be uh, also uh, a demo of composing music or arranging music. I'm still uh, you know in my kick of doing some Christmas songs, and I'll, I'll show you something that I'm working on now, and uh, and I'll be uh, uh, checking out some student compositions and giving feedback on those, and and we'll have a good time, discussions, and and again uh, that's tomorrow same time. And uh, then I'll be taking the next week, next two weeks off from both of those. And we'll see you all in January. So hopefully I'll see most of you, though, tomorrow or a lot of you tomorrow. So thanks again for being here and uh, goodbye.